rich history and in 1650 among the first European settlers were Robert Arthur and Dolar Davis. Prior to their arrival, those people <laughs> dwelling here were members of the Wampanoag and Massachusetts tribes. English land grants provided settlers large tracts of land in Duxbury, situate in Marshfield, and which the land of Massachusetts were originally, were originally found. This town has large tracts of woodlands that provided timber and homes and industries and provided cover for abundant wildlife. Here in Pembroke, we have three elementary schools, one being Bryanville Elementary School. Here is another elementary school, North Pembroke Elementary School, where the central office of all Pembroke schools are located. Another elementary school in Pembroke is Hawthorne Elementary School. Here I am outside of Pembroke Community Middle School, which is grades 7 and 8 for Pembroke citizens. This school used to be Silver Lake Junior High School from 1968 to 1991, but now it is Pembroke Community Middle School. Here I am at Pembroke High School, which opened as Pembroke High School in 2004. Previously, before 2004, it was Silver Lake High School, Pembroke Campus. Here in Pembroke, we have a great variety of bodies of water. One being Stetson Pond. Here is Little Sandy Bottom Pond. Behind me, we have another great pond here in Pembroke. Great Sandy Bottom Pond. Here's another awesome pond in Pembroke, Olden Pond, also known as the iconic Town Landing. <laughs> another pond to add to the list of Pembroke ponds is behind me, Furnace Pond. Here's another awesome pond in Pembroke, Hubma Pond. Here's another great body of water in Pembroke, the North River. The North River is formed by the junction of the Indian Head River and the Barker River. It flows northeasternly through the towns of Marshfield, Situate, Norwell, Pembroke, and Hanover and flows outlet of the Massachusetts Bay. This is where adult herringfish begin its journey towards their spawning grounds in the Furnace and Oldham Ponds. Grand Ole Fish Fry is the first Sunday in May every year. This year it will mark the 44th fish fry. As you can see behind me is the most famous rock here in Pembroke, the Herring Run Rock. Another example of a body of water in Pembroke is the Indian Head River. The Pembroke Iron Works was established in 1720 and used iron dredges from the bottom of the ponds. Ice was cut out from the ponds and stored into ice houses and used in summer months for food. The E.H. Clap Rubber Works initiated on the Hanover side of the Indian Head River in 1871. It expanded in 1873 to the Pembroke side of the river, which is right behind us. Nowadays, industries in Pembroke include health care and social assistance, which has 190 residents, construction, which has 160 residents, and finance and insurance that has 158 residents. Pembroke Town Hall. Pembroke, the population peaked in 2014 with 19,563 people. The trend has been slowly decreasing with a little bounce back in 2018 with 19,079 people. The reason for this is baby boomers are dying and the increase of cost in living is making it hard for families to come move into Pembroke. First recorded population was 1,409 people. Through the history, it has been increasing with a big increase between 1965 and 1970 due to the Boston busing. Blacks were starting to be bused into the white cities, making white citizens want to get out of their school systems and move to the suburbs, which brought a lot of people to Pembroke, Massachusetts. The Lydia Drake Library opened in 1944. Lydia Drake, a former school teacher, Built the building to the town of Pembroke for use of the community library. The library is now staffed and dedicated to volunteers. New volunteers always, are always welcome. Please call the library for information. Here behind me is the Pembroke Friends Meeting House. The meeting house was built in 1706 by Robert Baker with later 19th century additions. It's one of the oldest Quaker meeting houses in the United States. 
1976 when the meeting house was closed, its members transferred to meetings in either Sandwich or New Bedford. Today, the meeting house is owned by the Pembroke Historical Society and has been seen occasionally used by the Quakers. The Pembroke Historical Center preserves many artifacts and documents about the town of Pembroke, Massachusetts. Wow, first. Here I am in front of the Otta Hall House, built in 1685 by Robert Baker. Here I am standing in front of one of our old firehouses in our present day Pembroke Firehouse Food Pantry where many citizens donate food all year round. Here's the Pembroke Fire Department headquarters. They save many lives in Pembroke each year. Our old fire department. Here's the Pembroke Police Station. Real Estate Rocks headquarters. It was opened in 2010. This year, for future listings, the number one when you Google it on their website was in Menden for $989,500. If you search in their search bar featured homes, it was in Duxbury for $2,450,000. in the Pembroke area, like Pembroke fireworks in the Pembroke tree lighting. Here at the Mattachusett baseball field. It has grown over the years, now holds many sports like flag football. Youth football and cheer is very popular among Pembroke residents. They practice on the practice field, which are behind those woods, and they usually play on Sundays on the turf. Hobmock Arena is located on 132 Hobmock Street. It is home of many youth teams and even high school teams. Here I am at the entrance of the Pembroke Country Club where many residents of Pembroke and surrounding areas come and enjoy the great activity of golf. Here I am at the Pembroke Soccer Field where youth soccer plays all year round. Luke Vercoloni, a former American soccer player that played for the Colorado Springs Switchbacks, grew up in Pembroke and actually played on these fields. A few years back, he was actually coaching a summer camp during the summer for youth soccer players. He was born on April 4th, 1982, making him 37 years old right now. He was a PDL champion title 2002 and 2003. He was the 42nd draft in the 2004 MLS Super Draft. He even was a captain of the Colorado Springs Switchbacks. He truly is an historic superstar, isn't he? <laughs> Harry M. Woods, who was born on November 4th, 1996 and died on January 14th, 1970, moved to Forest Street, which I'm standing right in front of, in 1910. His parents moved here because they wanted to spend their summers in Pembroke, Massachusetts and ended up staying. His father became a supervisor of music for the Pembroke school systems and a songwriter. Harry M. Woods was a great songwriter and his number one song was I'm Going South. Here I am outside of the recycling center where residents used to have to drop off their recycling but now we have curbside recycling making it very easy to recycle. Here I am at the shipyard's dock. Around me is a lot of wilderness. Hunting is not very popular in the Pembroke area, but there is, there's a lot of woods. <laughs> on the other hand, is very popular in the Pembroke area. Many fish in the many ponds that we have. <laughs> the Veterans Day program will be held on November 11th at 11 a.m. at the Pembroke Community Middle School. There, the Gettysburg Address and the Veterans Day essay winners will present their winnings. Here I am at the Pembroke Courts where many locals ball up and also many basketball summer leagues are held. If you need to contact someone about Titans basketball, you can contact Ginger Camo. Here I am in front of the town green where many events are held here, like the Pembroke Tree Lighting which is on December 1st, 2019. Here I am in front of the Pembroke Recreational Center. It used to be a school and now holds preschool classes and daycare. Here we are at the Pembroke Wing News, where, where many come and get their coffee in this local town of Pembroke. Here is the iconic dairy twist where many people from Pembroke come and spend their awesome summers. While we are driving around our great town of Pembroke, 
let me inform you about another famous person that grew up in your hometown. Ben Adlund was an American cartoonist that was born in 1968, which makes him 51 years older. He was a screenwriter, TV producer, and director. He was raised in Pembroke and went to Silver Lake at the time, which would have been the Pembroke High School. He was voted most artistic, most known for his creativity of the superhero, The Trick, which most of you may know. In 1996, he was nominated for a Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Achievement in Animation. Why did Pembroke High School originally split from Silver Lake High School? The main reason that Pembroke split from Silver Lake was to develop its own autonomous school system. The town was looking to have more say over education locally rather than being part of a regional school district where they were also um, at the will of the other towns. And if we didn't agree on how our children should be educated, there's a potential that the values of Silver Lake may not represent the values of those in Pembroke. We also felt that we could deliver the education more effectively. Um, by having local control over the district rather than, um, again, being part of a regional school district where Pembroke was paying um, a more of the share for the running of the district than the other schools. Over the years, how has Pembroke High School evolved from Silver Lake? There have been many changes at Pembroke High School since the withdrawal from Silver Lake. Um, first and foremost is we've had a change in our demographics. Uh, the student of today looks considerably different than the student of uh, 14 years ago when we started Pembroke High School. So the, the, the district looks different because of what's happening within our community, first and foremost. We um, have a lot more needs of the students, um, where the students have a lot more needs than they do now. Uh, they do now than they did when they first came into the district first. Second, um, overall education is a lot different. We are teaching kids uh, more with electronic or computer-based testing versus back filling in you know, of the bubbles back in the day or filling out manual essays. So the delivery of education is different as well as what the student looks like.